The 3i Atlas is breaking every rule of planetary science. It is not just drifting through the void, it is following a mathematical blueprint that simply shouldn't exist in the wild. We are talking about the 120 degree rule. While the world calls it a comet, the geometry shows three precise mini-jets separated by exactly 120 degrees, the perfect tripod for stabilization in three-dimensional space. I'll be honest, that doesn't look like nature to me. It looks like engineering. NASA has already admitted they can't explain how it works within our current understanding of cometary behavior. Their models simply fail. But here is the part that really messes with my head. When researchers tried to get the high-resolution satellite data to confirm the structure of these jets, the CIA stepped in and denied access. Why hide the data on a piece of space ice, unless, of course, it isn't ice? Maybe we are looking at a piece of derelict technology still holding its balance in the silence of the darkness. Welcome to the cosmic unknown. Let's look at why the geometry of 3i Atlas is impossible. Before we go any further, I want to take a quick second to thank our channel members. You guys are the reason we can keep digging into these mysteries, and I truly appreciate you being part of this journey. If you aren't a member yet, consider joining our community. It's a huge help in keeping this project drifting forward in the silence. Now, let's get back to the evidence NASA can't seem to explain. To understand why 3i Atlas is causing such a quiet panic in the halls of astronomy, we have to look at the dirty snowball theory. For decades, the consensus has been that comets are just messy chunks of frozen gas and dust. When they get close to a star, they bleed. The ice turns to vapor and shoots into the void in chaotic plumes. It's violent, unpredictable, and completely random. I'll be honest, watching a natural comet is like watching a balloon with a dozen leaks. It tumbles and wobbles through the darkness without any real control. We saw this with Aumuamua and Borisov. They tumbled. They spun. They were at the mercy of their own internal pressure. But 3i Atlas is different. It's almost unnervingly stable. Instead of a chaotic mess of outgassing, it showed three surgical mini-jets. And they weren't just anywhere. They were separated by exactly 120 degrees. What gets me is that nature doesn't usually do exactly. If these were natural vents, mere cracks in the ice formed by the sun's heat, they would be scattered randomly across the surface. They'd be lopsided. One would be stronger than the others, causing the object to spin out of control like a broken top. But to have three identical points of force perfectly balanced around the center of mass, that's not a geological accident. That's a configuration. It is the exact tripod setup you would use to stabilize a craft in the silence. By using three points of thrust at 120 degree intervals, you ensure the object never loses its orientation. It stays steady. It maintains its intent while drifting through the interstellar void. Think about that for a second. If you wanted to send a camera or a sensor package across the light years, you wouldn't want it tumbling like a piece of trash. You'd want it locked on a target. You'd want stability. NASA is struggling to explain this. Their models simply fail to account for such precise geometry in a natural body. I don't know if the ice explanation is just a comfort blanket for them, but it's starting to feel thin. It's like finding a perfect cube in the middle of a forest. You know, immediately it was shaped by something. Some astronomers argue it's a rare form of structured sublimation but the mathematical probability of three vents forming at perfect 120 degree intervals is almost zero. And here's the part that really messes with my head. When independent researchers asked for the high resolution infrared data to see these jets clearly, the CIA stepped in and denied access. They flagged the data under national security protocols. Why hide images of space ice? Why classify the thermal signature of a snowball? Unless it is an ice. Maybe they saw the manufactured lines of a probe that's been drifting for millions of years. Maybe they saw a hull. The dirty snowball model is melting away, leaving us with a cold geometric reality. 3i Atlas isn't behaving like a rock. It's behaving like a machine. And if it's a machine, who turned it on? What gets me even more is the rhythm of this thing. 
3i atlas isn't just sitting there with static jets frozen in time it's pulsing it's wobbling when astronomers applied the larsen seconina filter a tool designed to strip away the blinding symmetric glow of a comet's coma they expected to find a messy crumbling core instead they found a heartbeat the data shows that the entire jet system oscillates by about 20 degrees every 7.1 hours think about that for a second that 7.1 hour period is the internal clock of 3i atlas it behaves exactly like a lighthouse not a natural rock tumbling through the void but a rotating system of beams cutting through the darkness with mathematical regularity. I'll be honest, the more you look at the rotation, the less it feels like a coincidence. The axis of this rotation isn't random. It's oriented almost perfectly toward the sun, within a 10 to 20 degree margin. It's as if the object is intentionally locking on to our star as it drifts. I can't shake the feeling that we are looking at an active attitude control system in mid-operation. In human engineering, if you want to keep a satellite or a probe stabilized while it traverses the vacuum, you don't just let it tumble. You use thrusters to counter the gravitational tug of nearby bodies and the pressure of solar radiation. My colleague, Dr. Frank Lokien, raised a question that really messed with my head. Why three jets? In our own technology, we usually use orthogonal systems, six thrusters placed in opposing pairs to cover every direction. But if an object is already rotating on its major axis, you don't need six. You only need a minimal configuration to adjust its tilt. A triple jet system at 120 degree intervals is the most elegant, energy efficient way to stabilize a spinning mass in three dimensional space. It's the minimum viable propulsion for a craft that has been traveling for millions of years through the silence. To see this exact geometry in a comet is like finding a working gyroscope inside a mountain of coal. It just doesn't belong there. And then there's the fourth player in this game, the Sunward Jet, or the Anti-Tail. While the three mini-jets provide the balance, this fourth massive beam is pointing directly toward the sun, extending 10 times farther than the others. Some researchers wonder if we are seeing a primary engine, or perhaps a collector, and its secondary stabilization thrusters working in tandem. In the world of cometary science, Jets usually point away from the sun, pushed by solar wind. But 3i Atlas is pushing back. It is projecting material toward the very source of heat that should be destroying it. The dirty snowball model suggests this is just gas escaping through cracks, but it's struggling to explain why the gas is forming such surgical, needle-like lines instead of wide, chaotic plumes. Comets don't have primary and secondary systems. They don't have attitude adjustments. They just crumble under the pressure. But 3i Atlas isn't crumbling. It's holding its own. It's maintaining its posture in the void, drifting with a level of precision that makes the natural explanation feel increasingly desperate. It's like we're staring at a jet engine and trying to convince ourselves it's just a very fast, very strangely shaped cloud. The more data we get, the more the cloud looks like chrome and carbon. This brings us to what I like to call the triple signature. On January 22nd, 2026, something extraordinary is going to happen. A moment of cosmic clarity that might just settle this debate once and for all. Earth is going to align almost perfectly with the anti-sunward direction of 3i Atlas. For a brief window, we won't be looking at this object from the side. We will be looking straight down the barrel of its trajectory. If the 120 degree thruster theory is correct, those three mini jets won't look like random plumes or messy tails. From our perspective, as the object rotates, they will trace a perfect geometric circle in the sky. Think about that for a second, a circle. In the wild, untamed chaos of the void, nature doesn't draw circles with gas and fire. I'll be honest, this is the part that really gets to me. When we look at comets we've studied up close, like the famous 67 P. Churyumov-Gerasimenko, 
we see what looks like a lumpy cosmic potato. It's a dirty snowball that spews dust in every direction like a broken sprinkler system. It's beautiful, sure, but it's a mess. It's the result of ice melting unevenly, creating jagged vents and wide, unfocused clouds of debris. But 3i Atlas isn't spewing, it's emitting. Instead of wide plumes, we see these surgical, needle-thin lines. They don't drift away into a chaotic tail. They maintain their structure for thousands of kilometers into the darkness. Some astronomers push back, of course. They argue that perhaps the internal structure of the object has three specific cracks, perfectly spaced by some freak geological accident. But one freak accident is a curiosity. Three identical accidents at exactly 120 degrees is a pattern, and a pattern is the first sign of intent. One hypothesis that's gaining traction, thanks to researchers like Avi Loeb, is that these jets aren't just gas, they are exhaust. We might be looking at the byproduct of a high efficiency propulsion system that has been dormant for millions of years, drifting through the interstellar void in a state of deep hibernation. What if the heat of our sun didn't just melt some ice? What if it triggered a prehistoric sensor? What if these jets are the triple signature of a machine trying to hold its balance after an eternity of silence? It's a haunting image, a piece of derelict technology far from whoever built it, still trying to follow its programming, still trying to stabilize its drift in the void. It's the difference between watching a landslide and watching an architect. A landslide is a natural disaster. An architect leaves behind lines that make sense. The part that really messes with my head is how we react to this. We have this deep-seated need to categorize everything as natural until we have no other choice. We'd rather believe in a one in a billion geological fluke than admit we might be staring at someone else's trash or their treasure. But the triple signature doesn't care about our comfort. It's a mathematical message etched against the blackness of the void. If that circle appears on January 22nd, we won't be looking at a comet anymore. We'll be looking at a ghost, a geometric ghost from a civilization that might not even exist anymore, still shouting its presence into the darkness through the simple, undeniable language of 120 degrees. It makes you wonder how many other ghosts are drifting out there, just beyond the reach of our current courage to see them. Sometimes, the silence of the void isn't because no one is talking. It's because we aren't listening to the geometry. I don't know if we'll ever get a hello from 3i Atlas. I don't know if there's anyone or anything left inside that geometric shell. But as it drifts away from us, back into the deep silence of the interstellar void, it leaves us with a haunting question. If this is a machine, how many more are out there? Are we living in a cosmic graveyard? surrounded by the derelict remains of civilizations that reached for the stars millions of years before we even learned to walk. Sometimes, I think we underestimate how quiet the universe can be and how easy it is to miss the truth because we're looking for something that looks like us. But 3i Atlas didn't need to look like us. It just needed to follow the rules of the universe, the rules of geometry, of balance, and of intent. We are so focused on finding biological life that we might be ignoring the technological life that outlasts the flesh. As this visitor fades into the darkness, it's a reminder that we are just one small part of a much larger, much older story. The silence isn't empty. It's full of history we haven't read yet. If you found this exploration of the 120 degree rule as fascinating as I did, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. It really helps the channel stay on course as we drift into these mysteries together. And if you want to support us further, clicking the join button to become a member makes a world of difference. Your support allows us to keep asking the questions that others might find too uncomfortable to voice. Thank you for being here in the cosmic unknown. Until next time, keep watching the silence. You never know what might be looking back.